We're back, and we've got a trivia question for you. If you had a television set back in 1956-57, you should be able to identify the three people with Barney Potts in this scene. Who are they, and what is the name of the series? A little clue, the show is named after her, and the guy on the right was a quarterback. Now back to our next guest. Davy Fulton has been called the spiritual godfather of the Conservative Party. For a short time in the early 60s, he led the B.C. Tory party until its defeat at the hands of the social credits W.A.C. Bennett. His upbringing was a formal one in a family where politics was second nature. Later at Oxford, this Rhodes Scholar left behind the idyllic Kamloops of his childhood. I lived there from the time I was born in 1916 to 1968. Uh, we had, I had f three brothers, there were four, four of us boys, and we had a wonderful childhood and young manhood growing up in Kamloops it was a it was well, and still is a beautiful place beautiful country and I have always felt that uh, I had such a wonderful upbringing that I, I owe the country that gave it to me and uh, a great deal on my mother's side both my both her father and her uncle my grandfather and great uncle were in provincial politics and both of them were premiers of British Columbia it was before the in the last century before the and my father um, was in both in provincial politics and in the government of British Columbia and in federal parliament. He served a term as member of parliament for the Kamloops area. So I had a tradition in that sense to follow. In 45, your friends had done something rather surprising for you. Yeah, the, the letter started out, Dear Davy, uh, some of us, uh, we were wondering whether you might ex agree to, be, to run as our candidate and then it obviously taken two or three days and passed and it ended up, as a matter of fact, we had a meeting last night and nominated you, so we hope you'll accept. <laughs> so that was, and I. That's very funny. Yeah, and that I was my it. first election then in 1945. He won that election and so began a long political career. At 41, as Justice Minister in the Diefenbaker Cabinet, he discovered firsthand the awkwardness of amending a London-based constitution and was inspired to help draw up the formula for its patriation. When our, our term of office began to run out at the end of 62, 63, and the political climate deteriorated, um, but that formula was there and the agreement was there. It was taken over by the Pearson government after they were elected and Mr. Favreau made one or two changes and it became known then as the Fulton Favreau formula for the patriation of the Constitution. So I regard that as a, uh, that was all there when Mr. 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 Trudeau came along later and although he didn't adopt that specifically, the process had been there and I, I understand that it was a, a good background uh, for the constitutional process that went on after that. So I was very happy to have been involved in and that close to success. I'm just sorry that we didn't get complete success while, while, while we were in office. Are you ever going to retire? Oh, yes. Yes, I, <laughs> I, I have to. I, I'm very fortunate in that I enjoy good health uh, at my age and I hope to enjoy good health for the rest of my life. Um, but my wife and I want to do some traveling, for instance. Uh, there is a great deal of that and other things to be done, and, and I'd like to do that while I still have the health and the vigor to really enjoy it. And I've had a pretty full life, but uh, so I'm not anxious to down tools and stop work, but uh, and there's always a garden to look after, and there's lots of golf to play. <laughs> so I would have, I think, a very happy retirement. No matter what accomplishments George Hungerford may eventually leave as a legacy, He'll always be remembered as the rowing partner to Roger Jackson, who stunned the Olympic rowing world by winning the gold in the 2,000-meter Coxless Pairs event of the 1964 Summer Games in Tokyo. He's since been honored with the Order of Canada, the Hugh Marsh Award, and countless other awards. When he first started rowing, however, it was as a member of the UBC 8s. I tried out for the 8-oar crew, and I made the Canadian team rowing the 8. And that was in the summer of 1964 and uh, we rowed and competed and succeeded in the eight in uh, Henley and, and uh, St. Catharines, Ontario. In August, I was diagnosed as having mononucleosis and uh, decided that, uh, I didn't decide, the doctor decided I was going to bed. About the second, uh, second week of September, I got out of bed. So I, I turned out again, but it was obvious that I wasn't strong enough, obvious to the coach anyways, that I wasn't uh, going to make it in the eight-oar crew. Roger Jackson was there and he had been 
going to row a pair in the Olympics. And the fellow he was rowing with was put into my seat. And so what they did was they relegated me to row the pair with Roger. What do you remember most about the gold medal race? First thing I remember is when they, uh, when they called the uh, Et Bupre Partier, the, the starting call was that uh, the worst thing that can happen when you start a boat is to, for one of the oarsmen to go too deep and catch what we call a, you know, a frog, just to go deep. And that turn tends to turn the boat over, and in fact, it can turn the boat right over. And on the first start, uh, that's exactly what I did. I went deep. Roger was off balance, and the shell almost, uh, you know, almost went right off, uh, right, right over. Fortunately, someone had fall started. So that gave us a, a second chance. Second time, we didn't make any mistakes. Was, was it actually a relief to be out on the course and just get on with it? Get on with it. That yeah. first stroke is so important. I mean, it's really important to get a good start. We had rode a very strong course and had, uh, had had the race under control. But in the last uh, three or 400 meters in particular, I was starting to tire. And uh, although I had been recovering and uh, improving all the time, my endurance was improving, I still was certainly not up to what I consider to be my peak condition. So in those last two or 300 meters, I was, I was starting to fade. Now in a pair oar event, each one of you has one oar. And uh, you, the, the stronger oarsman just has to slow down. So. Crossing the finish line three hundredths of a second ahead of the Dutch, uh, that's close. That's a close race. I rode the following year, <clears throat> and Rod Roger and I rode over in uh, the Henley in, uh, in England, and uh, that was a, a marvelous, marvelous summer. But I think the, I knew, I think psychologically, I knew the, the end of my rowing career was done. Was done. I was uh, off to other, other challenges, and... Uh, Rowing uh, was just, uh, just one of those along, uh, along, along the road. Truly, time does not permit to the telling of the multitude of charities, causes, and boards that George sits on. Plus, he continues to run one of the busiest, busiest law firms and families in Vancouver. <laughs> Davey Fulton now practices law in Vancouver and is working on the Lubicon Indian land dispute. Okay, Lynn, how are we giving the answer to our trivia question? All right, the people with Barney Potts are singer Terry Dale, announcer Bob Switzer, and Edmonton Eskimos quarterback Jackie Parker. Incidentally, this is a scene from the Terry Dale show, which features Terry and the Rhythm Pals singing True Love. Lynn. What movie introduced that song? Oh, that's easy. High Society, starring Bing Crosby, Grace Kelly, and my all-time favorite singer, Frank Sinatra. Mike Furby, tenor and bass player, Jack Jensen, lead singer and guitarist, and Mark Wald on the accordion. Together, they were the Rhythm Pals, fixtures on the Canadian country music scene since way back in 1946, when they made their debut on CKNW Radio. Their perfect three-part vocal harmonies made the Rhythm Pals a household name for over three decades. Well, we've got Mike and Jack here, but we don't have Mark. Where's Mark? Mark is retired. Mark retired about a little over a year ago, and he's living in Nanaimo. And uh, we were going to retire too, but uh, I asked Mike one time, I said, would you want to retire? He said, not really. I said, okay, let's go for a few more years. And people still want us, so we thought, the heck with that. We'll, we'll keep going. Yeah, you're having fun. Oh, sure we are. Oh, sure. It's fun. When we started out, there wasn't uh, too many people that what we did. Like, we uh, uh, sang, uh, like, trio. Plus, we accompanied ourselves, like, you know, instrumentally, so we could go out and do a show. Didn't have to worry about a band or anything. And uh, it was unique in that because uh, nobody really did it then. Like, and, uh, and as we went, along, we, we went along with the music, like, you know, whenever uh, music changed, it was clips or music or something coming in, we'd learn that. So. It wasn't, we weren't just uh, strictly in the Western and country field. We just, you know, the Ames Brothers did a song. We'd, oh, we'd do the Ames Brothers, and we'd the Mills Brothers do a song. We'd, so we just went along as music and all the latest pop stuff. If you knew it, we'd, we'd do it. Here on the range I belong Drifting along with a tumbling tumbling You had a great life back then, didn't you? Oh, it, was it was. It was it really, it, it, they say the good old days, they were because uh, entertainment was different then. Like, you know, you, uh, people used to come out and uh, there wasn't so much television and there wasn't so much all these video things you can get now. Then you go out there and you, have, you go to a dance or, and, and you have fun. You know, just, they just, and it's like a, like a big, big party, that's what it was most of the time. And the places we opened on Kingsway, well, we opened 
Camel. Well, we did shows for all of the Super Value, all those stores. We used to play our, you know, like outside and do the shows and everything. I remember you did a lot of radio jingles in those days. You were probably the first jingle singers in the city, weren't you? Bill Ray used to have on the NW, are you listening? You know, we, we uh, he did a jingle, and so we used to go, are you, are you listening? Are you listening? Are you, are you listening? listening? We've, We've done, done it again. again. The jackpot has been won. We've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> now you, so and so has won $10, whatever it is, you know, for the best story. It was a lot of fun doing the Burns Chuck Wagon show. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was. He was... But uh, Don Franks, who's living in Toronto now. Pat Kirkpatrick. Pat Kirkpatrick. William McAllister. God bless Lorraine. She's, you know, she was a dear, dear lady. And uh, Barney. Barney was the, was the, the... Cook. Was he the cook? cook he yeah, was the, the cook. Yeah. There were some funny things on that show. I guess you're pretty happy with the way your career turned out, aren't you? Yeah, the only thing oh, we, we did we never done with was Vegas. We've done everything else, and uh, uh, you know, maybe, time. yeah, maybe never, never too late, you know. Listen, man, I would be like that. <laughs> Do you get nervous? Sure, I get nervous before everything. Every show we do. It was good. Last night I was going to sing uh, 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 Cab Driver. Forgot the words. <laughs> so I'm saying, Mike, what's the words? What's the word? Completely, completely lost because I was nervous. I was up tonight. You think you'll be playing five years from now? I don't know. Because uh, my wife says that you better get a, a, a hobby, Jack. Or you're going to drive me crazy. So. Well, because you know, you, when you you're away from home a lot, you come home there. Now that you interrupt what they you know they got a routine. And he, it's okay for, for months with that, but now get out of the house you know, or do, do something, you know. <laughs> we'll do uh, things around the Kelowna area and Penticton, you know, just, just a... Vancouver. Vancouver, you know, wouldn't we? Play for wakes and <laughs> weddings and bar mitzvahs, you know, whatever. You know. The pals have spent the summer performing in the Prairie Provinces and at the Calgary Stampede. Well, that's a wrap for us. Next week, I visit with world-class swimmer Elaine Tanner, and I talk to Expo's Man of the Year, Jim Pattison. We hear the sweet jazz sounds of Fraser McPherson, and I talk with writer and humorist Eric Nichol. We're going to leave it with Wagon Wheels by the Rhythm Pals from the 1954 Burns Chuck Wagon series. Good night, Lynn. Good night, Terry. Good night, all.